Ariel Hawani gearing up for UFC 129 in Toronto alongside UFC President Dana White. And Dana, you are always usually charged up at pre-fight press conferences, but it seems like you've got an extra pep in your step this time. You seem a little more excited. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for this fight. Obviously, you know, I, I love the UFC experience, what it's like when you're inside that building and, and you know, you got great fights and the place erupts. 55,000 people for this fight. It's going to be insane. And the, the other thing is I, I've always been so nervous about doing a stadium because I didn't know if we could pull off that same, I don't know, the, the same show that we do in the smaller venues. But not only did we pull it off, we exceeded it. I'm, I'm excited for Saturday to come. You've been to a couple of stadium fights uh, for boxing at Dallas Stadium, the Cowboy Stadium. Did you look around when you were a spectator there and say, I like what they're doing here, I don't like what they're doing here, and when we do a stadium show, I'm not going to do this? I always do. Every time I go into a venue, I look at things. and um, I mean, that was really how, when we started the UFC, we went to the first ever UFC event, and we were going, oh, God, imagine if we did this and did that. So I I've always been like that, and I was impressed with, uh, with, with Dallas, Texas Stadium. And, and, I, and I'm telling you, I think we did this one better. We, we, I took some of the things that they did there and made it better. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna blow people's minds on Saturday. Have you done any research to find out if maybe you could have drawn more than 55,000? Maybe you could have gotten 70 or 65? The only research you can do is put more tickets on sale when you go on sale. I, I said many times... When we sold out 23,000, I'm like, how many more people really needed tickets? If you said 7,000, that's a lot of tickets. You know, some shows don't sell 7,000 tickets. 7,000 more tickets, that would be 30,000. You know, never did I think we'd sell 55,000 now. So I don't know what the real number is. It's scary, but it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a damn good thing. You announced a couple weeks ago that Anderson Silva is going to fight Yushin Okami in Brazil. After Anderson Silva's win over Vitor Belford, you said that it's starting to almost be the time where maybe we could see that dream fight between him and GSP. I'm curious about the timing of it because it seems like with that sort of looming in the background, more people would have been interested in this fight. This could be GSP's last fight at 170 if Anderson wasn't booked yet. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that's the thing. Everything in this business is about timing. And, you know, Anderson wants to fight. Anderson stays busy. And we got the fight in Brazil. And Yushin Okami still is hanging out there. I mean, the guy does deserve a shot. Uh, you know, and you can go back and everybody watching can go back and look. What I've said about GSP Anderson Silva forever is this is a dream fight. We'll see what happens. Maybe if he knocks off this guy and that guy, we could make this fight happen. Well, there's, there, there's, there's two obstacles in the way. Saturday, George St. Pierre has to beat <clears throat> Jake Shields. And Anderson has to beat Okami. Then we'll start, you know. And that's it? Yeah, I've never, never once uh, talked to Anderson about fighting George St. Pierre. I've never said, hey, let's set up a fight and let's do this and that. I've never said it. So, you know, we, we've got to be in, it, it's all about timing. You find the right, right time and, and place and we'll see what happens. But if George wins, this could be his last fight at 170, right? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, Randy Couture, speaking of last fights, do you believe him? He says this is it. Do you actually believe him? Well, there's this punk in Las Vegas that I can't stand. That's always, you know, he, he, he's supposedly a reporter, but he always talks about, first of all, when, when Randy Couture said that he was retiring after this fight, um, all the media started calling me and saying, what do you think about Randy retiring? I said, listen, Randy's retired before. I've heard him say he was gonna retire before. The thing that I know about Couture is, first of all, as long as the guy's healthy and able to compete, I think he's always going to be looking for challenges, and it's hard to walk away, you know, when, when you're, you're a real fighter like he is and like Chuck. Look how hard it was for Chuck to walk away at a time when he absolutely, positively should have walked away. Um, so that's what I was saying. Listen, Couture's a competitor, and I think whenever there's a, 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 a time where he thinks he wants to go out and compete against another human being, he's going to come out and do it. In other words, you don't believe him? No. Speaking of another legend, uh, Hoist Gracie is pulling a James Tony here. I don't know if you saw him, but he has crashed the press conference. Is this his pitch? Is this? Did he look at Tony and say, "All right, yeah. this is what I need to do"? I know he uh, he grabbed me before I walked in here and he said, "Can we talk? Can we talk?" I said, "Yes, we'll talk right after this." I love Hoist Gracie. Um, you know, I have a great relationship with him and his manager. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Are you open to that idea? 
uh, yeah, I, I, I get, listen, the guy's a legend, and, and what he's been telling me is he wants one more fight. He wants this to be his last fight. He he started in the UFC. He wants to retire in the UFC. He wants this to be his last fight. So I'm going to talk to him and see what he says. Is there a fight that interests you for him? Well, it's not about fights that interest me. I, what, I want to see what Hoist Gracie wants. I want to see, you know, w- what is compelling him to, to chase me down and 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 – uh, I, what does he have to tell me? What, what, he has something to say to me, apparently. That's why he's here. He told me before we came in, and, uh, you know, I, I have nothing but respect for him. He's always been a gentleman and always been a great guy and everything else. So we'll, we'll sit down, and I'll listen to what he has to say. All right, final question. It's a stack card, a lot of interesting fights. We would even mentioned Jose Aldo and Mark Hominick, Bocek, Henderson. Any other fight that is not getting love that really excites you? Yeah, I think the whole card is stacked. I think that this... Uh, I said when we came here that we'd put on a great card, and, and it's one of the reasons also, uh, you know, my belief in that we put together a good card Why we're putting every fight available somewhere on television from Facebook to Spike to pay-per-view. Um, and this is the first time we've ever done it. All right, it goes down Saturday night live on pay-per-view. 55,000 fans at the Rogers Center here in Toronto. UFC 129, George St. Pierre going up against Jake Shields. Thank you for the time, Dana, and uh, good luck on Saturday. All right, buddy, thanks.